please stop you right there and give a thumbs up to Balal there for using optical instruments back then. All right. Welcome back to another session of why we shouldn't chase formulas. And today's topic, we are going to discuss about array optics or geometric optics. And I personally call it as coordinate geometric optics. There's a reason why I do that. So in this session, I'm going to give you some ideas. So without any knowledge about ray optics, you can actually solve any kind of a problem just by using your basic common. Now, when we look at a problem which is from uh, ray optics, we immediately tend to go with these two formulas. Personally, I don't even remember which formula is for which, right? But I actually uh, developed a sense with these problems so that I actually look at these problems in a much practical manner. Let's look at this website, ophysics.com. I already mentioned that. I will leave the link right in the description. Uh, in this website, there is a simulator where you can actually have a mirror, a curved mirror or a lens, and you can place the object in your desired position and the image is actually immediately shown. It's actually directly simulated, right? So you can actually play with the object a bit in every position that you want, and you can see the image. I want you to personally do this thing. I want you to personally feel the position of object and image in every possible situation. And when you do this, like try to cross the center of the uh, situation mirror and try to uh, cross the focus of the mirror and try to go beyond and see where the object is, where the image is. Not just the positions, I'm asking you to try to feel the velocities also. Like which velocity are you moving the object with and which, ve which velocity the image is actually moving. When you do this, not with just to the mirrors, with also lenses. Look at this thing. You can move the object on the left side, the image is clearly moving on the right side and when you move on to the focus, the image goes to infinity and then when you cross it, this is what happens. I want you to practically feel these things before you actually look at any opt ray optics problem. All right. So when you do this, you will definitely develop a sense in your head uh, so that with that idea, you can actually ha solve half of the problem just by looking at it. And rest of the problem can be solved, of course, using by the formulas, right? So it makes it much easier to follow up a problem. Now it's not just that. When you develop that kind of sense, you tend to solve the problems in different, different manners. Now look at this specific problem. You have a length with a focal length of five centimeters. There's an object of height seven centimeters standing at a distance 15 centimeters, right? So immediately you tend to go with the formulas, try to find the position of image, try to find the image uh, height, and we approach the problem, right? But I would suggest a different method here. Try to obviously take two rays. One is parallel, which must go through the focus. The other is right through the center of the lens. It shouldn't deviate at all. Now, what did we do here? Like, do, by doing this, what did we actually achieve? Now, look at this entire problem in a coordinate geometric plane where the lens is at actually the horizon. The focus is here. We have two straight lens. Now, forget about this line. Forget about this part. The important parts are this line, this straight line. And the other straight line, I will draw it with green ink. All you got to do is look at these two straight line equations, OK? Now, the red line is clearly passing. It's, it's ha actually having a slope of this height is 7 centimeters. We already considered that. So the red line is clearly having a slope of 7 by 5. I would write minus 7 by 5 since the slope is clearly negative. So the red line has a slope of minus 7 by 5, and it is passing through 0, comma 5. So I would immediately write the equation of this uh, red line can be written as y equals to minus 7 by 5 into x minus 5, basic mathematics, a straight line equation. Now look at the red line. The red line is clearly is having 7, the this distance is given as 15. So the slope of this line is minus 7 by 15, and it is clearly passing through origin. So the equation of this thing is y equals to minus 7 by 15 x. Now you have two straight line equations. All you got to do is simply solve these two equations and you get the multi, uh, point of intersection and that point of intersection clearly gives you the position of the image not just the position of the image or the height of the image is also immediately can be solved you see what happened there without even using the idea of ray optics we actually use the solving using coordinate geometry so that's one more idea for you to approach the problem in a different manner now let's look at one more big problem that was there in one of the previous JE questions. Now here is this question. Now look at this question. The question already looks so complicated. This was a question that was given in 2016 JE advanced as far as I remember. And when we looked at this question the first time as a lecturer, 
and we as a group of lecturers and we looked at this problem we thought this problem is going to eat a lot of time from a lot of students because this problem just doesn't include a lens it includes a mirror and that mirror is also at an angle it is actually tilted at an angle now if only you approach this problem in your conventional method taking this as an object finding the image through the lens and this was an object for the mirror which is principal axis is like this so this will be the object and you find have to find the image that involves a lot of mathematics and that takes a lot of time and all you have is one hour for just physics exam right and in that one hour you have to spend your time right so that you actually clear the exam i personally have seen students waste a lot of time just on this question and as a lecturer i actually personally wasted a lot of time during our practice but that but that's different for us right after hours and hours of struggle on this specific question we finally came up with a one simple solution since i've already developed this sense of optics when you move the object when you move the image what happens i actually got an idea which is so simple look at this all i did is from the object he clearly mentioned the object is small so the object is right here uh, on the uh, axis all i'm doing is i'm taking one simple ray that one simple ray this is 30 degrees so this is 30 degrees simply reflects at 60 degrees and even no we even know this point the coordinates of this point which is nothing but 50 comma 0 so we can definitely simply find the equation of this straight line now once we have the equation of straight line what i did is i try to simply substitute all the options on the equation of straight line and bang only one option was satisfied i know you have questions like what if two points two options actually uh, satisfy the equation in that case yeah you are out of luck in some way but you still have other options to solve this question there are other ways i know it's always a good thing to go with the conventional methods but what i'm trying to say here is if only you look at the problem in different perspective there is a heavy chance that you might be able to solve the question in much lesser time much quicker time and try to save a lot of time in the exam question time as i promised i'll be posting a question at the end of every video that i'll be making from now onwards here is a question for today we are all aware of the fact that there is a difference between a virtual image and a real image right so let's just take an example for a virtual image you are standing in front of a mirror the rays are hitting the mirror and as they are reflecting and you are observing from the real world when you are observing from the real world the reflecting rays make a, a virtual image on the other side this is a virtual image you don't really need anything all you need is a mirror but to form a real image we already known this thing if you only if you have a lens you have an object here we've just seen this thing the the rays will converge on the real side and you'd actually need a screen that is the question here that is the source of the question here now my question is all about that specific screen what happens when you don't put your screen at the at the position of the image what happens when you move it beyond or after that specific point now what happens when you introduce a screen that is not in the position that's right you will see an image but the image is clearly blurred when the screen is actually is not in its original position now if i want the image on this screen the new screen i'll have to adjust my lens so that the image is actually created on this screen you see that now the image is, is actually formed on this screen but if only i remove this screen you will actually see a blurred image on the wall you see that question 2 we definitely need a screen for a real image to form that's what people say what happens when i completely remove the screen and actually go stand beyond that point okay so the rays are clearly converging to this point and they are clearly again diverging and human eyes can happily detect diverging rays and they should think that there is an image there so if we can actually look at that image why do we need a screen in the first place let's do an experiment we go behind the screen now and try to remove the screen and let's see what happens can you see any image any image yes that's right 
you get to a specific position you definitely can actually look at an image but that is actually inverted now try to answer what happened right here so let me know what you think about these questions in the comment section and let me know what topic do you want me to discuss next in the comment section and this is a reminder that if you are looking for a JE physics lessons I suggest you to register at examtracker.com and do not forget to follow us on Instagram well I'll see you in the next video thanks so much and bye bye